Yes. Hey, all right, everybody out there. Thanks for joining us for Over Coffee. Today is May 25, 2020, and it is Memorial Day. Uh, we had a little bit of an audio technical glitch for my camera and an audio glitch for um, <sighs> for the audio, for, the, for the, the guest audio. That's me and John. So let me uh, let me explain. I'll explain what happened. And when, by the way, they could. I was still okay because my microphone was picking up. Yeah. So they heard my mistake. <laughs> but okay, so here's good. so here's what happened. I have multiple sound systems attached to my computer. Yes. Because two of my monitors have speakers. Okay. So, although I could hear you. <clears throat> Because the sound was coming out of this monitor speakers, what I'm used to. Okay. The, uh, the default, my forward monitor speaker, and because Zoom wasn't publishing on my default, I, it wasn't picking up as desktop audio. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. So while this is annoying, it's very, very interesting. Because I think I can use that to an advantage at some point. Like it, it sucked for today, but... Yeah. So anyway, we've got to give everybody 12 minutes back. And the only way I could think of doing that is by John telling us a little bit about his pinball. <laughs> it's going to take more than 12 minutes. I mean, like, where do I start? <laughs> well, so, let's see. How, we, we did... I, how did you become a pinball aficionado? I don't know if that's the word that is, a pinball enthusiast because like aficionado makes it sound like you're good at it I'm certainly not good at it like, no, 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 I no. you're good at the it. knowledge of it that's fine pinball so history aficionado okay well so in, 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 in as short of a way as I could describe it is like this I lucked out in being born on the tail end of the 1980s so as a result I got to live just through the downturn of arcades well, there was still at least enough that machines were all over the place, but, you know, right before they kind of became, you know, just just another thing in the past, you know? Now, that said, there was plenty of places where pinball machines used to be. You know, like, do you guys remember when, like, pizza parlors used to, like, lease yes. out arcade machines? Like, you used to go to your local pizza place, and they'd have, like, maybe one or two machines, and they'd rotate them out? Yeah. So my dad having his own business, meaning he had his own office, would mean that we'd occasionally, when I'd go see him, you know, at work, we'd go get a slice of pizza for lunch. And sure enough, the pizza place I used to go to would often have, an, have a pinball machine. But I think Pinball machines before, were rare in, in pizza places, but yes. Well, really, really came down to whatever the place used to license. Like the Roma Pizza, which is you know, in Lindenhurst uh, on Montauk Highway, they used to have at least one one machine. They'd have an arcade machine and a pinball machine, and it would rotate through. But the biggest thing that I remember is a lot of the places I used to go to had a decent amount of pinball machines. Okay. If I can remember correctly, Adventure Lane used to have a ton. Oh, yeah. You know? They had a whole room of them. Or yeah, well, they had like at least a whole section, yeah, like a, a very decent sized section. So that's really where it started. But I mean, I was too little. Like I liked the look of the machines, but I was never tall, like tall enough to actually play them. Um, but I mean, like, you know, over time as arcades got scarcer and scarcer, like I really enjoyed pinballs. So like whenever I used to be able to play it, I'd try to, and I had the chance. And then eventually, you know, when I got older, um, I started looking for places you could still go and play it and found collectors, enthusiasts, people who actually had a lot of machines. And so I'd go check out their collections and, you know, and, and go you know, actively seek them out wherever I could find them, you know? So yeah. that's how I stayed stayed in pinball but i mean the okay. thing i love the most about pinball is it's a completely unique experience because every machine itself plays different based on like layouts and things like that they all they have a lot of the shared elements but it's also because of the way that the game employs gravity and physics no two games of pinball are identical like you could play an arcade machine you can memorize the layout like you know how like you know how the game is going to go you know even like there's certain shared elements will carry over that the game will be the same no matter what you do. Pinball is not the same because, like, from the second you hit the plunger and the ball goes flying all over the place, it's all a matter of, like, you know, what is this ball going to do this time and how do I manipulate it, manipulate the field to try to get the best score, you know? Yep. Got it. Well, there you go. Plus, it's also a great combination of skill and... um Skill and entertainment, 
because you know like the game really like you know it it you have to be good at it to be able to really play the game for very long so it all comes down to you know how much can you pick up on what you need to do but the more the better you good at it you, you unlock more modes you see more like uh, um like the like depending on the how old the machine is like there's some some of them have like missions where like um so I mean, but it's also that's the thing of like pinballs have evolved over time. That like you know through history, like they started pretty simplistic and basic and just about accumulating a score, and they you know it, it implemented a lot of like growing technology. Like it started implementing like sound and music, and it started implementing uh, dot matrix uh, screens, which then also started implementing like visuals of yeah. like instead of just showing a score, now it actually shows like artwork and stuff, and like. There's like a video mode and stuff. It's cool. Cool. I was just looking for, and it's apparently not here anymore. Uh, I was just looking for uh, the uh, the Windows pinball. Oh. Uh, and I was going to ask some questions. I was going to ask you questions but it's about also, that. It's also, well, here's the other thing too, though. It's also, something that is very, it's also something that's very difficult to replicate because video pinball and physical pinball are two wildly different things. Oh, sure. And while you could replicate an arcade machine or you could emulate an arcade machine, you can't really do the same for a physical pinball. Like, they're digital recreations of a lot of pinball games, but it's not the same thing as the as the real machine, you know. Yep. No, I agree. I agree. I was just uh, I was just looking. I was just poking around, so I figured I'd, uh, I'd look oh, no, for there's, it. There's plenty of there's plenty of great programs that have pinball, you know, pinball games. But I mean, like Windows Pinball. Yeah, I know it's out there, but I don't know where you'd be able to. You know, probably you could play it on archive.org or something like that. Yeah, something like that. I uh, I just looked it up, and they dropped it when. Uh, <clears throat> They they dropped it when they went to sixty four bit architecture, which is funny because you'd think it like it'd be one of those things that they'd keep up because like it's sorry they still have Minecraft no not Minecraft they still have Minesweeper and they still have Solitaire. Well, yeah, Solitaire will never die. Try to kill that for years, but <laughs> and, and not for actually any actively pursuing killing Solitaire off yes. computers. Okay. Microsoft, but now it's a collection. Microsoft Solitaire Collection. I don't see Minesweeper. I like the Microsoft games that they used to have, like Jazz Ball and um, uh, Ski Free and all that. Ships Challenge. Uh, it's now online. Where is it? Ski Ball? Oh, not Ski Ball. Um, Minesweeper. Minesweeper. He said Ski Ball. I played a lot of Ski. I thought he said Ski Ball. What did you say, John? Uh, j uh, jazz ball. Oh, jazz ball. I think J E Z Z or J -A or j it might have been jazz ball. I don't remember exactly. Yeah. I played a lot of ski ball every time I went to. Um, I was pretty good at ski ball when you go, when you go to like a fair or whatever, mm -hmm. or an arcade. They had the ski ball there or bowling alley. Good times. Hmm. So you were saying, I guess everybody heard in the first iteration of today's Over Coffee, uh, Rich. You, we, everybody heard that you were playing Left for Dead, but uh, yeah, okay. Um, so for now, until the um, pandemic is over, yes, we will probably be streaming uh, Left for Dead Two or something of the equivalent for a small group of us every Saturday. Oh, okay, cool. Yep, that just sounds because, good. Just because we we. I got and, an opportunity. I got an opportunity to stream some Hearts of Iron yesterday on uh, my Twitch channel. Oh, nice! Um, nice. Yeah, uh, GMG Dave. And then I've been playing Stellaris. Ginger and I played Sc uh, Scythe. I learned Ooh. how to play that. Um, that's gonna great. That's gonna be great. That's gonna come up on my Wednesday night show at 10 p.m. on uh, Game oh. Master Games Facebook. So, Dave. Yes. What we need to try is we try to set up a board game where one of us comes in as an observer. Right. Yes. You were you 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 had talked to Board Game Arena. Did you find out or from there, them if that's possible to do Observer? Right. I think you. Well, did. no, no, no. I didn't find out about Observer. What I was asking about was uh, <clears throat> what I was asking about is setting up multi multiple games by one okay. one paid account, and one paid account can set up multiple games if they're not playing. You know, uh, if they're turn based, not if they're real time. Um, okay. But any turn based games, one person with a paid account can set up multiple rooms. Well, it's I have a paid problem. account, so I we can experiment with that. And then what I would like to do is I'd like someone. You said there was an observer setting. 
I don't know if there's an observer setting. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, then we'll have to look. Because if there's an observer setting, then that would mean that all the hidden stuff would be seen by one person. And then that person could probably host the game. Show it. We can stream it. We could stream it, right. Yeah, so, yeah. that would uh, be really good. Let's see. Does board game... So what are you doing today, John? I don't know. I mean, it looks kind of raining, so like, and it's not like we've been going out or anything like that. So I'm probably just going to maybe do a little bit of work, like not a ton. I'm not looking to do too much because it's like I need a bit of a break, but I don't want to fall behind on work either. But um, probably just get some games in. Uh, I've been I've been playing a lot of Apex Legends, um, which is a it's a competitive. Uh, 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 um, uh, battle royale, or uh, whatever the heck they call them. Um, it's yeah, actually, it's, really... it's, yeah, it's, battle. It's, yeah, battle royale. Yeah, I forgot like... what the actual. I forgot what they dubbed the genre. Like, I was trying to remember the exact, like, specific, you know, uh, phrasing of it. Um, but I've been playing a lot of that. Um, I was playing some games I picked up on uh, Microsoft Game Death Pass. Match. You mean? Well, no, it's not exactly deathmatch because it's all about like you know you drop into a, to an arena, and you um, Fortnite. Well, the, well, the first thing like I'm Fortnite, do, yeah. Well, no, it's it's okay. Yes, like Fortnite. Fortnite's not the original, but yes, very much like Fortnite. Yeah, what is but, the original but, one? I can't. It's escaping me. Um, well, the my, thing is, I mean, technically, if you want to be technical, there's a lot of games that kind of came out around the same time. I think the first one was a game called The Culling, but it's kind of a very divisive game because the um, you know, they kind of fail to iterate it or like uh, monetize it in a, in a good way. So like the community kind of abandoned it and they, they recently got into a lot of trouble because they tried to relaunch it, but with a very uh, aggressively bad uh, pay structure. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, you guys probably haven't heard about that. So actually I'll throw this out there and get you guys opinion on it. So the way that it worked out is that it would say it's a game where you pay like seven bucks just to buy the game. And then okay. you have to you have to buy tokens that you then use to play the game. So you pay seven dollars. You you pay like a, I forget what the amount is, but you pay a certain amount just for the ability to then buy matches to then play the game. And if you if you like if you win, you could win tokens to play more matches. But if not, you'd have to then buy more tokens each time you wanted to play a match. Oh, interesting. Okay. The problem is with a lot of those games, like, you know, you could easily get knocked out in, like, the first few minutes just due to bad luck or just because, like, somebody else kind of jumped in way too close for you. Right. You know I mean, like, imagine, like, say, like, all right, fine, I spent seven bucks to buy the game. I, I bought um, I bought one match for a dollar or three dollars or whatever it is, and I lost in two minutes. And now if I want to play again, I have to pay another dollar or three dollars or whatever. Like, it's funny, we were talking about pinball. Like, I mean, technically, like, that can happen in pinball and that you could wipe out very quickly. Yeah. Right. But I mean, at least it's a matter of, like, you know, it's, it's well, if you're good at it, that might not happen, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. No, I, I, I agree. I don't like that type of stuff. I've, I've got a friend that plays uh, Overwatch competitively. That's, the, that's another one of those. Not, not exactly. Overwatch is more of like a tactical team kind of. They don't okay. have like the whole hundred people drop in or whatever. That's true. Um, Apex is is more like, uh, well, I mean, like I said, you have, out of ones that I, I know personally, there's the Culling, um, there's uh, Player Unknowns Battleground, which was a uh, PUBG, which is what I was playing for a while. Um, but I mean, Apex came out like I think a, two, at least two years ago, and really kind of like like shook things up just because of just how well received it was so mm -hmm. it, it, it's one of those games where it's very much about mobility like Fortnite was all about like building and the cosmetics and all that stuff but this is more along like you just you can move insanely fast so it's all a matter of like maximizing the use of like the, the the play field to um to really you know do well but before i do any of that what i did was i unplugged my computer like i unplugged my monitor i unplugged my keyboard and all that stuff because i've been meaning to crack open the case dust it off but i also got a one terabyte solid state drive because it's been something i've been meaning to do to add more storage and okay. i just finally went and i did it yesterday i ordered something from I ordered something from Micro Center because they've been doing curbside pickup. Okay. And it's funny because I drove out there on Saturday about an hour before they closed, 
not realizing that the curbside pickup closes an hour before the actual store does. Oh, oh man. And as for the actual store itself, they only let you in if you're like an essential worker. Um, and you, you told them you were an essential worker. Well, no, like they're talking about like military and like and and healthcare personnel. Which I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna, not gonna argue with then that. They should say back. military, military and healthcare personnel instead of essential worker because. <laughs> oh, they did. They did. I just, I just said essential worker to kind of keep it like simplistic instead of like getting to the minutia of it. But if you guys want to be pedantic, fine, whatever. Hello, and pedantic. <laughs> Well, there you go. <laughs> well, I'm just going to get some games in. I Okay. I got a game, or at least, all right. So I got Microsoft Game Pass for the PC, which allows you to basically, like, you pay a monthly fee, but you can download and play games unlimited. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I downloaded a game that features one of my biggest fears of all time. And I think, like, I might have hit the wall yesterday when I'm like, I don't know how much more I want to keep pushing it. So, like, um, Kind of like I'm trying to like juggle that. Got it. So, um, actually, that's probably a good question. Before before I spill my beans, let me put it this way: Have you guys, have you guys, <laughs> when playing a video game, encountered something that goes along with like one of your biggest fears? And how do you deal with that in game? Like, are you able to ignore it? Or do you deal with it? Like, all right. So that's a good question. I'm not quite sure what you mean. Um, okay, so then how about this? I'll explain what I'm talking about. So this way, first of all, I'll put my curtains because I'm not going okay. Because it's a little bit too bright. So, okay, so Subnautica is one of those survival games, kind of like Minecraft, in that you, you, you're, 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 you're somebody who was on a spaceship that crash landed on this giant planet, and you need to gather resources and build things to survive and, and kind of like, you know, make it out of there. Um, However, it's all water-based, meaning like you 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 swim for resources. You could eventually build like um like a submarine and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. My biggest fear, though, is it's particularly with video games, is I've always been afraid about in video games of like being in a place where you have very limited movement, like swimming, and okay. there's something very very big in the area with you that like you know that. I guess because it's a matter of like um, just fear of something being significantly larger than you and more mobile in a, in a setting where you are not equipped. So like I had, I actually like jumped out of my chair yesterday when like I'm, I'm exploring. So like one of the places you can go to is the giant ship that crashed that like, you know, you jumped into an escape pod and busted out of, but the ship is there, like the, the ship that you are on. So you can eventually, like, you know, you, you go near it to try to get resources and stuff. But what I didn't realize is towards the tail end of the ship is this giant, huge, aggressive monster in the water that, of course, you can't see it because, like, you know, it's in the water. So, like, you know, I'm, I'm swimming around, picking up things. I just, I hear this, and I'm like, oh, geez, what the hell is that? And I just... As I'm swimming away, I look behind me and I see it, and I'm like, "Oh crap!" And I jump out of my chair. So, hmm. uh, so I I haven't done stuff that has dealt with uh, ears per se, but I have played games like I'll be honest, Left for Dead. You know, there are still some jump scares in it. It's pretty cool, <clears throat> especially when it gets all dark and everything like that, and or it goes silent. You can hear the sounds in the background. So I understand what you're talking about, John. But uh, like, I, like it's not a not a personal fear. It's but I do understand what you're talking about. So I and the team have been working very hard on trying to finish this up. And I know you know, John. I think we're finally at a point where. Um, oh, and Erica said fear of the unknown. Hmm. Right. I think we're finally at a point where um, both the app version and an online web version will be ready. Uh, well, the, the, the app, the Super Show, yeah, the app version. Wow. Uh, the app version doesn't have uh, the it, it. The game plays. Um, there's a few card effects which I have not programmed in, but they're specifically not in because um, we're moving over to a state machine server side which allows us a much better handling of all the effects and being able to add cards without uh too much difficulty 
So, but there's le- there's I think there's like there's not that many there's no bugs in the app. <clears throat> Brian worked, but at the same time, we've been working on a web version because mm. it uses the same server. Okay. And um I haven't put in the graphics yet, but if you what I'll be working on bro finishing this up. Cool. See it. But, no, I'm not uh, seeing anything. Oh yeah, I'm watching on my phone. Yeah, I just put it up on the phone. But we have it so that <laughs> So this is what I've been doing just so that just so that we're we're clear. I've been doing this as this is what I've been doing in the pandemic. As I taught myself how to program an Angular okay, and great. TypeScript to put this together. But basically, um, for those who know Super Show, uh, this is the field, and it doesn't look like a lot now because the card graphics aren't on. All right. Uh, but the very next thing I'm working on is the card graphics. And once I turn off, uh, right now it stops after the first turn just so that I could test the first turn, and we're testing the server at the same time. The app is good to play a game, it looks like. Um, the web version will be done uh, probably this week. And uh, the web version also is testing out player versus player, so it won't just play against the computer. You'd actually be able to play again. Great. For, for super goodness. <laughs> so it was so much more difficult than we anticipated for right. on, on various different things, specifically the animations. But uh, now that we have a we have a solid server, have some solid front ends, card game will be. It'll be so much. It'd be cool. It'd be so much cooler when we were able to add stuff too. And I know John's been waiting. Mm-hmm. So, it'll be fun. That's great. And then from here, all we'll do, all we'll be doing is enhancing it. Right. So right. that's what I've been doing during this pandemic. And then it can be part of. Uh... Uh, ta- it can be part of tabletop if we do uh, anything online. It can be part of uh, Uplink. <laughs> Maybe I guess you know. If well, it'll be it'll be ready. I I don't see any reason why not. I mean, one of the things we would do is uh, the first thing we would do is a tournament, right? Right. The very first enhancement to this would be uh, setting up a, a tournament style play, right? And have it save in game, like have it save in the database so that we can track it. Track who uh, wins and losses. How easy would it be? If you don't mind me interjecting, how okay. easy would it be to also drop in other games to, into what essentially you've been building too? Not to say that you're very going to go easy. about doing so, but like the answer is very easy because the way we built the the, the server and the back end, I can program. The hardest part of any any game going forward is going to be the graphics, right? Because we um, because of the way we built the state machine, it's just a, the server is just a messaging server. Right there's there's the messages that go back and forth, which is done. That's that's the easy part now. They just go to whoever it needs to go to. Um, but the only thing that we need to do is um, we'd have to program in the rules, which after having gone through um, Super Show three, four, five different times and different ways to do it, we're finally at a we're, uh, we're at a point where we understand how a game mechanic work. Programming in a game. Mechanic uh, almost second nature. Mm. So I'm sorry, John. I didn't mean to cut you off, but it's a question oh, we asked ourselves for the same same reason. Because one of me was wondering, like, you know, like additional stuff that we might be working on in the future, other games, but also even like you know licensing it out because it's I've, like it's funny that in this whole pandemic, I've it, I find it interesting that you know, and maybe because it just caught so many people off guard, but it just kind of highlights how few official channels there are to play certain card games online yeah. you know like we were talking about things like you know magic has like magic online or the arena um Yu- Oh has an app and there's maybe like one or two other ones out like pokemon but which so really it's the it's the big three which i would argue that like you know i don't know how popular Yu Oh is anymore you know or the, i know this still has a pretty decent following but like i don't know if it's like the top three that like if people used to i used to tell people like you know, when it comes to card games, there's really three. There's really three big guys out there. It's Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon. Everything else is there, but not as dominant as those three. Right. 
I mean, like there's in this day and age, considering how many card games there are, I'm just surprised that there's less official support now. So much so that something like Hearthstone came around and kind of like, you know, beat everybody to the punch, you know? Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we're going to, we'll, we're going to continue. Uh, like I said, I'm going to turn this on for multi-turn soon. I just wanted to get all the testing for a single turn out. Because there's, yeah. there's eight different scenarios on a particular turn, and I want to make sure I got all, all of those scenarios done. Next thing is, is I'll open up the uh, finish testing all the card effects, which I programmed all of all of the ones that we that we had, and we came up with a uh, an effect system, which was pretty ingenious, so that we get a new card, and we, well, the test will be when we add new cards to make sure that they fit without having to reprogram anything. Cool. Which, which was the point, right? That was the that was one of the more difficult parts. I, we did yeah, we did not anticipate the difficulty of that. Right. But awesome. It, look, it's there. I'm, I'm finally happy with it. I, I had to learn two new languages throughout this whole thing in the last two years. <laughs> but, I, just, but I just thought of something that I wanted to ask you guys, and whether we want to touch upon it on today or not, because I know we kind of lost about 12 minutes, so we wanted to try to you know add to the back end. What are some defunct card games that you really enjoyed back in the day that something like, you know, essentially bringing back in a digital form, or if they were to do it again, like what are some defunct CCGs that you really liked that just is just you can barely play them anymore? Oh, fine. Um, World of Warcraft. That was a card yeah, game. World, of War World of Warcraft basically is Hearthstone. It's a little bit different, but it has a lot of the similarities. Yeah, it's the same company. So. Well, yep. I mean, they use a lot of the same art, but like, it's a little bit different in that, like, World of Warcraft. Basically, anything could be a resource, or right. anything could be mono and magic, you know, it's, or land. Um, but like, you know, instead, it's like, no, we're just going to give you one per round, so you have to learn how to manage the resources and how how do you want to play that. But World of Warcraft was, you could play more in a turn, it's just, you know, what do you want to give up to make it into a land instead of, let's say, having it be something else? Um, I mean, in terms of, like, Defunct, um, I don't know if there's any card games that I own that aren't a thing anymore, but, I mean, I know there's a lot of them that I've seen out there. Is, um, L is L5R still, still around? It, it like, is, and it, it will not, not the traditional L5R. Like, yeah. you know, it was rebooted by Fantasy Flight. Yeah. And that's one of those things where, like, you know, they, with their LCGs, the only downside is, is unless it's f in, in, enormously popular, they support it for a little bit and then eventually kind of trickles off, you know? Uh, all the problems, you run into something like Netrunner, whereas, you know, it's very popular for a while, but then eventually becomes unsustainable and then they just drop the whole thing, you know? Um, I like Netrunner. I did like it. I liked Netrunner. Spellfire when it was out for that little bit of time. What about that? Uh, there's there's a ton of them because I once made a list of all the defunct and I did PCG play games. Uh, Legend of the Five Rings. I did like the original. Yeah. Um, what was the one where uh, Spoils Spoils was out for a while? <laughs> Remember that one? I didn't, that was crazy. I didn't play that one. Yeah. yeah. Suppose I mean I know a couple of people who play like um, they play Rage. Rage was like the the, uh, the White Wolf, uh, Werewolves of the Apocalypse, um, T uh, TCG. Oh uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Which I mean, I've never played it, but like you know, they were they were big fans. Um, chaotic was cha chaotic took over my store store by storm for like six months. Everyone yeah. wanted to play chaotic. Then it died. <laughs> so that brings us to our uh, twelve minutes over. Yeah. We gave back twelve Ooh. minutes on the back end. It's Memorial Day. Remember the families and the uh, uh, soldiers that have died to bring us our freedom. And we know and... that most people are not watching us now, but maybe you'll watch us later. Yeah. So we, we, we're done? We're good? We're good. Hey, everybody. Hope you enjoyed today and uh, on your day. Most people have off. Not everybody. A lot of people are, of course, still working essential workers. I'm off. Hey, congratulations to me. And it uh, sounds like Rich is going to be busy programming. And John, hopefully you're doing something fun today. You said you're going to work a little and then maybe play a game or two. So yeah. good morning, everybody. Good morning again. Good, good morning, morning again. <laughs> Thank you, John.